Hi everyone. Welcome to the last part of interpretation of financial statements. In this video, we are going to learn how to interpret liquidity and solvency. This is uh, just a two uh, handwritten pages, which I have discussed in my a revision online revision classes at cap and school of accountancy and management so unlike my past videos uh, this is not a powerpoint presentation so it won't look that nice within two minutes i'm just going to sum up how we have to write liquidity and solvency so the most important thing when you write liquidity ratio is this you check whether there is a cash and overdraft if cash balance has reduced as compared to previous year, you state that cash balance has reduced and the organization might be having liquidity issues. But the examiner will not be satisfied by that. You have to just verify why cash balance has been reduced. Maybe they might have acquired a subsidiary and might have paid cash consideration, or they might have paid cash to purchase property, plant, and equipment. So if the cash has reduced significantly, then you write the reason from the scenario and write liquidity is at stake. Maybe in previous year, it was positive cash balance. It might be showing on a current asset. In this year, it is now having an overdraft balance in current liability. That means from positive cash, now it is negative cash. That means liquidity has been affected right that point liquidity has been affected. And once again, from the scenario, pick out why cash balance has fell down. And the receivable uh, and the most important four ratios with respect to liquidity are current ratio, receivable days, payable days, and inventory days. If current ratio increases, it means the numerator current asset has increased or denominator current liability has decreased. So in current assets, there will be cash, inventory, and trade receivable give much importance to cash. So if cash balance has increased substantially, it will increase the current ratio. So from the scenario, just pick out whether cash has increased substantially in this year. If yes, take that reason. It may be company might have issued shares or maybe rights, right issue. So if cash may be, so if maybe they might have issued shares so that cash balance has increased as a result of issue of shares. So that cash balance increase or current ratio increase is not actually because of performance. It is because you just issued some of your shares. And current ratio decreasing, as you know that if you have attended my past classes or in videos, you have watched my videos in YouTube, if the denominator, if the numerator decreases, the ratio also decreases. So it can be due to a decrease in current asset or increase in current liability. So decrease in current asset, mostly it will be decreasing cash. And I've already told the reasons for decreasing cash. Maybe they have purchased, maybe they have paid uh, cash consideration while acquiring. Or it can be they might have settled some of their liabilities also. Settlement of loan also or it can be due to the increase current ratio will fall if denominator increases that is if current liability increase maybe instead of cash position negative cash and overdraft have increased that's it current ratio discussion over now with respect to receivable days only thing you have to do is that if receivable days has increased you say that entity is not able to collect money from receivable as quickly as compared to previous year thereby it affects current year's liquidity. And if your, if your receivable days decrease, you say that it means entity is able to collect money more quickly as compared to previous year. So liquidity has increased. And similarly, if payable days increase, you just say that you have to interpret like this. The entity is not able to collect money is not sorry is not able to settle its suppliers as quickly compared to previous year thereby which shows that company doesn't have enough money right now affects liquidity 
payable days decrease means you are able to settle your supplies more quickly that means you have more money liquor days better and inventory days increase means and it is not able to sell inventory as quickly compared to previous year it is not inventory turnover inventory turnover it will be expressed in times if inventory turnover increases it is actually better because inventory turnover means how quickly you turn you convert your inventory into turnover or revenue so if inventory turnover increases it is actually better but we are focusing on inventory days here not inventory turnover so understand that difference inventory days so in inventory days if it increases that means you are not able to sell as quickly as compared to previous year thereby affecting your liquidity and if your inventory days decrease means the number of days you held an inventory is less that means you are able to convert your inventory much quickly into revenue as or you are able to sell your inventory much quickly as compared to your previous year thereby increasing the liquidity and finally when you say liquidity don't forget you have to conclude you have to give a conclusion whether uh, you have to conclude what happened to cash and you have to give a conclusion whether liquidity is better overall liquidity whether it is good or bad now gearing gearing means it can be debt divided by equity or debt divided by debt plus equity so when will gearing ratio increase when the numerator increase that means when your debt increase so when will your debt increase you have taken a long term loan or you have issued loan note or ready you have issued redeemable preference share also remember irredeemable preference share is equity but redeemable preference share will be considered as a debt so in this three situations your debt increases thereby your gearing increases which is not good so when will your gearing decrease increase it can be due to one more reason denominator and ratio are inversely related so if your equity decrease your gearing will increase when will your equity decrease when revaluation surplus there is a downward revaluation maybe there is an impairment which is your revaluation uh, previously an asset was revalued upwards now it is going to be revalued downwards so as per accounting standard 16 if a property which was revalued upward is now revalued downward first you have to cancel the revaluation surplus maybe as a result of that your re revaluation surplus went down so your equity will went down and your gearing will go up and when will your gearing come down when will your gearing decrease when the numerator debt decrease when will your debt decrease when you repay the long term loan when you repay or redeem your loan note or when you redeem the preference shares normally it will be a repayment of loan and when will gearing ratio decrease when your numerator increase because numerator and ratio are inversely related and when equity increase gearing ratio will decrease and when will equity increase when you have issued shares equity will increase when there is an upward revaluation it will also revaluation surplus increase equity increase so that's all my dear students so with this we are coming to an end of how to interpret financial statement in my youtube channel i have posted the first video was how to interpret financial statement in that particular video i have discussed the uh, what are the how you have to score maximum marks uh, on how you can score maximum marks on interpretation of financial statement and what are the five types of questions that can be asked in your acca with respect of interpretation and how you have to answer then with respect to roce i have uploaded six or seven videos on how to interpret roce in different situation when you compare with previous year when you compare with another organization when you compare with industry average when there is acquisition when there is disposal of a subsidiary we have discussed that six to seven videos and there is one video which state how you have to interpret net as a turnover ratio and there are three videos which teaches you how to interpret gross profit margin and operating margin in different in those five different situation 
And in this final part, I just have taught you how you have to interpret liquidity and gearing ratio. So in a series of around 30 to 15 videos, I have taught you how you have to interpret financial statement. And I hope you have find uh, these videos, the series of videos useful. And let me know how you, whether you have find this useful and whether you have, uh, whether you were able to score good marks in your ACCF financial reporting, please let me know about your results. You can contact me in my uh, Instagram chat page, learn with Basil Nilamra. Thank you, everyone. This is Basil Nilamra, tutor for financial reporting at Kaplan School of Accountancy and Management. Thank you, everyone, and all the best for your upcoming ACCA financial reporting examination. Goodbye.